Hey, what's up guys? It's Lewis Beasley from PCAddicts.com, YouTube.com, and whatever .com channels and sites you can find me on. Today we're doing a full review of the Google Nexus 6, a bigger phone with more of everything. Does it actually live up to that name? Let's find out. So let me start off by first saying that this is a really big phone. And the whole reason for me upgrading from the Nexus 5 to the Nexus 6 was that the Nexus 5, it was just a little bit too small for my hands. Um, I have really, really, really big hands. So when I'm texting or holding the phone, my hands tend to cover up almost the entire phone. And you can only imagine what it looks like when I'm trying to touch the little bitty tiny buttons on the Nexus 5 screen. Uh, that being said, when I heard that the Nexus 6 was coming out, I had to jump on it. It fit my profile. I wanted a bigger phone. So I reached for the Nexus 6. Let me also say that it did take a couple days for me to get used to a phone this size. I mean, that's expected. If I've been using, you know, a five inch, four inch phone my entire life, well, not my entire life, cell phone wasn't born in dinosaur days, but if you've been using a phone you know, for the last several months or several years, whatever the case may be, then, you know, jumping outside the box to a bigger phone is definitely gonna take some getting used to. But, after a couple of days, this definitely felt like a normal size phone. And even to this day, it still feels like a normal size phone. I think I'm actually spoiled now because now that I've become accustomed to a screen this size, I know that I'm going to be reaching for a phone if I ever upgrade to a new phone, which I eventually will. But when I reach for a new phone, I'm going to be reaching for a phone that's, you know, a custom close to this size. Does that make sense? A custom close? That's not even a word. What I'm trying to say is I'm definitely going to be reaching for a phone this size. Now before I get into my likes and gripes on this phone, let's take a look at the physical phone itself to see what features it has to offer. Starting at the front of the phone, at the top here you have your listening slot. Uh, behind this slot there is a hidden LED light that Google did not take advantage of for whatever reason. But yes, you can use that LED light back there if you root your phone and use special software. You can use it for message notifications. More on that in another video. Beside the listening slot you have your front facing camera, you have your 6 inch screen, and then at the bottom here you have your microphone slot. Hidden behind the microphone slot you have your two front facing stereo speakers. Taking a look at the back here, you have your Nexus logo on the back, your Motorola logo right above that with the dimple in it, as well as your rear facing camera. Now here at the bottom, there's a little bitty pinhole there, which I believe is a microphone. I have not confirmed that, but I believe that's one of many microphones here on the Nexus 6. When taking a look at the side here, you have your power button, and then right under that, you have your volume rocker button. On the other side, nothing to look at. Plain, simple, and clean. At the bottom here you have your charging piece for charging the phone and transferring your data to the computer also. Here at the top here you have your microphone jack as well as your SIM card slot. Now the outer perimeter of this phone, you have this metal filling which gives the phone a nice durable feel, a very, very elegant and durable feel. And on the back you have this expected plastic that's covering the back end of the phone. You'll also notice that the Nexus 6 is very, very curvy. Instead of having the square edges, it looks like the edges are actually rounded off. And also on the back of the phone, you have a curved back end, which definitely adds that better grip to your hand when you're actually utilizing the phone. Overall, you can't deny that the Nexus 6 is a very nice looking phone, especially with the rounded back and the rounded edges. It gives it that nice, modern and elegant look. Kind of like myself. Nice, elegant and pretty looking and modern. Now Google promised to deliver a bigger phone with more of everything, more screen size, more sound, more of a processor. What's actually in this phone? Does the Nexus 6 deliver on those promises? If not more of everything, then pretty doggone close. The screen size is a whopping 6 inch quad HD display up in size from last year's 5 inch display on the Nexus 5. Dual front facing speakers providing that stereo sound compared to last year's mono speaker on the Nexus 5. Also the processor is a monstrous Qualcomm Snapdragon 805 quad core 2.7 gigahertz processor. A significant step up from last year's Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 2.26 gigahertz processor in the Nexus 5. 
Now the 3220 milliamp battery that's currently in the Nexus 6 is a big, big step up from last year's Nexus 5 device. I'm currently getting over 24 hours of usage out of this battery in one charge, and that's pretty heavy to moderate usage. Now I do believe that the new Lollipop Android operating system as well as the size of the battery is a big contributor to that great, great performance. Along with other upgrades, you'll find that the camera on this phone was upgraded as well. A 13 megapixel camera on the back and a 2.1 megapixel on front. This phone is also capable of doing full 4K video as well. You'll also find two bright LED lights hidden in the ring of the camera. Google, you seem to be doing a lot of hiding these days. Hmm. Now the Nexus 6 is running the latest version of Android, also known as Lollipop. In my opinion, it does offer a more intuitive UI experience. The feature changes in the new Lollipop version of Android do seem to be more intuitive for the most part. For example, it makes more sense to move the silence control feature option from the power button to the volume button. Now if you're running the older version of Android on the Nexus 5, if you hold down the power button you'll realize that you have several options there. You can power off the phone, you can set it to airplane mode, or you can silence the phone. Now these are volume control functions under the power button doesn't really fit there. That's not really intuitive. It makes more sense to add these type of features to the volume button itself. Also, on this new Nexus 6, swiping down with a single finger gives you access to your notifications, and then swiping down with two fingers takes you to your quick toggles. Tapping on the cellular icon under the toggle menu gives you a glance view of your data consumption. Very handy for those who are on limited plans. Now with a new design, a new operating system, and new feature comes a new price. How much does the Nexus 6 cost? Well, that depends on where you buy it from. The average cost for the Nexus 6 is around $649 for retail for the 32GB version and $699 for the 64GB version. Now let's get into some of my likes and gripes about this phone. Aw, 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 aw. Truthfully, this is definitely a solid phone. Uh, Google and Motorola have done an excellent job building and designing this phone. Most of my gripes aren't with this phone at all. The phone is great. The, the phone is excellent. It's, it's curvy. It, it's modern. It's, it's a pretty phone. Uh, most of my gripes are with the operating system and the bugs that come along with a new operating system. So, so this Nexus 6 is supposed to be Google's flagship phone. Uh, a phone that introduces their best operating system ever. In my opinion, yes, I do believe that Lollipop is the best version of Android yet to be released. But if you're going to go this big and do a big launch like this, you want to make sure that the experience is as perfect as possible. Now, I'm not blaming Google for just throwing this out there because, again, like I said, the phone is solid, the phone is perfect. It's just you have to question if they actually have a beta testing team because some of the bugs found in the Lollipop my young son was able to detect a couple bugs like why is it doing this or why is it doing that? You know, they're real simple bugs and you're wondering this great company, how can they overlook some of the simple bugs? You know, we're, hum we're human beings though. In Google's defense, I understand. I've worked in development. I I've done development. I know the beta testing and the testing. I know how things go and you can overlook simple things sometimes. But wow, I mean, when you do a big launch like this, you know, you definitely want to offer the best experience out of the box in the very beginning with consistency. Not really a gripe, not really anything against the phone, it's just I wish it would have had a better launch. Uh, in any event, there is no LED indicator light, which is one of my gripes. Um, the way Google decided to go, and I, and I understand what they're doing, uh, Google has always been a company that works with cutting edge technology. Uh, you know, they don't want to remain on yesterday's technology forever. You know, you have to take that step forward to move towards more intuitive and more unique uh, 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 things in regards to technology. So instead of having the LED indicator light, they have this ambient display type feature. And what I mean by that is when you actually pick up the phone, um, instead of there being an LED light blinking indicating that there is some type of message notification, uh, when you actually move the phone, if that notification is still active, the phone will display the notification in black and white temporarily and then shut back off. So no LED indicator light, but if you pick up your phone or you move the phone, it will display that notification on the screen in an ambient view, a black and white view. Very, very nice, but I don't know. To me, it doesn't work as perfect as it should. It's almost like sometimes it works and sometimes you have to shake the phone a little bit for that to come on. Again, this is more of a UI bug in the operating system itself and not the physical phone. 
Another one of my gripes is on the back end of the phone. You have this nice metal frame going around the phone. You have this nice, nice, very nice screen. And then on the back, you have this plasticky type fill-in. Uh, let's put a piece of plastic back here. Nobody will ever know. <laughs> Not bad. I mean, it doesn't really take away from the phone, but you know, maybe a more rubberizer, more elegant type back end would have been nice on this phone. Again, in Google's defense, I know if you're going to be competitive with price, you have to take not really a shortcut, but you have to you have to go a little bit cheaper somewhere. So the back end of the phone probably isn't as an isn't really as important because most people will be using some type of phone case, which will cover the back of the phone, uh, the phone perimeter it, itself. So not really a big, big deal there, but just a, one of my small gripes. So those are really the only two gripes that I have with this phone. Uh, the other gripes that I have are really related to the operating system. I really don't want to get into that in this video. I, I will probably save it for another video. But you guys read blogs. You watch YouTube videos. I'm sure you've heard some of the many rumors and bugs stories going around with the Lollipop operating system. Um, some of them may be false. Some of them may be true. I don't, I don't know. But it does have, have its bugs and a lot of more simple bugs that that I'm sure Google will fix. In their defense, they have been great at fixing bugs in the Android operating system. And by this being the, their uh, flagship phone, it will be one of the first phones to receive the updates. So, you know, I'm overall, I'm happy. I just wish it was a better experience, uh, a better experience in the beginning, but it will get better. Google will fix it. Google will fix it. Google will fix it. Sorry, dolls. Y'all gonna get me in trouble, man. All right, so now let's get into some of my likes and gripes about this phone. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> a six inch screen. <laughs> I'm definitely liking this six inch screen. And as I said earlier, it does take some getting used to, but once you actually get used to this size phone, it starts to feel normal and you don't even think about the size anymore. Uh, in fact, you can easily become spoiled by this size screen. Six inches is a lot of real estate. Uh, it does have a lot to offer. Uh, I will say that uh, Samsung seems to take more advantage of their bigger size screen with their custom uh, interface on top of Android. Uh, but, you know, Google is simple. The, the, the new version of Lollipop, it's, it's simple, it's intuitive. I like simple, I like intuitive. This is perfect for me. So I definitely like the screen real estate. Let me also say this, you're going to hear some people gripe about six inches is too big. Oh, is it? <laughs> Six, <Okay>. never mind <laughs> i'll tell you this you have people who like apple you have people who don't like apple you have people who like android you have people who don't like android you have people who's going to like this size phone and some people who don't it's all a part of the consumer experience so is six inches too big that depends on the person it's a personal preference so don't listen to someone who says, don't get that phone, that screen is too big. You have to experience it for yourself. You know, if you can't afford the phone right now, at least go into the store or go somewhere where, where they have a model of this phone and, you know, kind of hold it in your hand and feel it and see what it, what it feels like. Uh, I will admit, it will take a little while to get used to it. So I don't know if you'll get used to that six inches and that first experience inside of a store. Um, but like I said, you know, you just have to spend time with the phone to really, really get a feel for it and decide that if six inches is too big or not. You have your likes, you have your dislikes. It's all part of the consumer experience and it's all part of personal preference. Another one of my likes with this phone is durability. <laughs> the phone definitely feels durable. You know, it's not thick. It's actually fairly thin. This phone is actually really, really thin and it doesn't bend. Well, there's a little bend in the design of the curve, but the phone itself doesn't bend. I'm just playing. Don't you guys get mad at me. Everybody talks about the bending with phones and everybody knows that any phone will bend if you bend it hard enough. <laughs> I'm just joking. But yeah, the, the, the phone is definitely, it definitely has a durable feel. Even with the plasticky type back end on it, the, the phone is definitely elegant. It's a nice phone. It feels good. It feels durable. Uh, and the big curve, or should I say the curve in the back of the phone in the way that it's designed definitely makes it feel that much better in your hand. It feels good. Overall, I have to say that I'm very happy with this phone. Uh, you know, I am waiting and looking forward to some of the bug fixes in regards to the operating system, but it's Google. They'll get it taken care of. We're all confident. <laughs> we'll just have to play the waiting game. Seriously, don't let people's opinion define your own opinion. To truly appreciate this phone or to even form a valuable opinion of this phone, you really have to experience it yourself. So, you know, you can take videos like these and, and, and get a hint of what the phone is like. 
But you know, don't let that define your own experience. Go out and experience the phone for yourself and uh, you may like it. In fact, I'm confident that many, many of you will like this phone. It is really, really a great phone. I'm happy with it. I'm going to let you guys get back to your electronic devices and I'm going to get back to my electronic devices. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. <laughs>